Nicola Gobbo was no stranger to the headlines during the gangland war, but her involvement and identity have been kept secret. That is, of course, until now and until journalists here at the Herald Sun caught on to the story. They battled as police took it all the way to the High Court. Let's now talk to the man who was very much involved in this, Damon Johnston, the Herald Sun editor. You have just pressed publish. How did that feel? Uh, a quiet sense of vindication. Uh, this has been a five-year struggle, um, a fight for the truth, we called it. Um, this was about informing Victorians about what happened to their justice system and who did it. Um, a Royal Commission has been called. As you said, it's gone all the way to the High Court. The High Court essentially found in our favour. Talk to us about the process to get it there, because obviously you don't just head to the High Court. What about all the other courts? Give us a bit of an idea. So in late March 2014, we got onto the story. Uh, the police raced us into the Supreme Court that very night, so it's almost five years ago to the day. So you were about to publish and off came the injunction? Yeah, that's right. So uh, we had to remove some material from the story. We did push ahead and publish those first two days, yep. um, but it was a Tuesday night in early April that uh, we got the order, stop the presses. Um, the police I mean, that's a stuff of legend, but that happened in this story. Well, it did, and it was well after the first edition deadline, uh, and uh, I'm still restricted as to what I can talk about on, about that night. However, the police did go to court. The court did order us to stop the presses. We had to uh, uh, comply with that, um, and uh, the story was going to be a major break on Lawyer X. As it turned out, we uh, came up with a new headline, which was Fight for the Truth, and ran it bigger and better than the original story. So it kind of helped, ironically, helped the story go mainstream. What does it take to be an editor in a situation in a state that, as we know, they're not afraid of uh, trying to stop stories, and, and certainly when it comes to the courts? What's it like to be an editor in that sort of situation while also trying to have a day-to-day -day relationship with police? Look, Harold Sun's relationship with Vic Pol is good. You know, day-to-day, -day, um, we engage with them in a very professional manner. This has been a, a point of conflict for five years, um, but we've managed to compartmentalise that. Uh, as far as being the editor, look, uh, there's an amazing team here. Chris Tinkler, the deputy editor, was on that first Sunday night. He's now been editing this story for five years. Anthony Dowsley, Patrick Carline, the reporters. And a shout-out for our lawyers, uh, Justin Quill and John Paul Cashin who, without them, we wouldn't have uh, got to first base on this story. I know we'll be hearing from John Paul a little later on as well. The, the point from the police, obviously they've been chasing this about revealing the identity of Nicola Gobbo here, and one of the points that they've said is, is, said is they're, they're worried about her safety, obviously. How do you, as an editor, balance the, the need for uh, the public mm. knowing the identity of someone who's played such a pivotal role in our legal system and perhaps, well, as we know, uh, we have no idea where this will go from here, with also maintaining her privacy? Look, there is no doubt that this was a dangerous double game that both Nicola Gobbo and Victoria Police embarked on. They're the ones that embarked on it. Um, we've tried to balance uh, the public's right to know with her safety all the way along here. The police have an obligation to protect her now. And ultimately, the High Court and the Court of Appeal both found that she could be kept safe and that her anonymity was subordinate to the public interest. So we're happy to um, comply with the High Court on that one. And there will be a lot of people who look towards the police actions throughout this time and really wonder whether it's about trying to protect her or trying to protect the police who were essentially using her to try and solve these cases. I suspect, Aaron, I suspect it's a bit of both. Um, I think there are... The police do have legitimate concerns for her safety, but equally, they didn't want this story out there. Lawyer X, Nicola Gobbo, was the story Victoria Police didn't want Australians to read. They spent more than $5 million on uh, Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court action. And that was battling this newspaper? In part, yes. Um, and... Uh, multiple injunctions against us. They suppressed us, injuncted us, stopped our presses. And they spent more than $5 million doing that and battling more broadly to keep this story a secret. But on each occasion, they lost. Mm. And I think the public's right to know trumps the uh, police version of events here. In that entire five-year process, obviously, other big stories come and go during that time. Mm. It would have been uh, at times at the forefront, at times in the back of your mind. Was there ever a time where you thought, you're just not going to be able to publish this story? Oh, many times. Uh, there were uh, months and months that this was all suppressed. You know, clearly we were suppressed from naming her. We were also su um, suppressed from um, other uh, details. So, you know, um, to the readers that would see on occasions those obscure stories 
with acronyms versus acronyms yes. um, going to the High Court. This is what it was about. We'll be asking Anthony in a moment about some of the details of the case. Anthony, who uh, wrote, was yes, part, of the, uh, part of the, the journalist, journalistic team on this. But uh, how high do you believe that this actually goes within Victoria Police? Because we know there was a lot of political pressure at the time to get this crime solved when it came to Melbourne's underworld. Well, Aaron, I think the Royal Commission will get to the bottom of this. Um, I think uh, all of Victoria's um, former and current senior commanders will be called to give evidence. Mm. I think, and we wrote this morning, that the, uh, the scandal will reach into the Office of Public Prosecutions. I think it will reach into the Victorian Government Solicitor's Office. Uh, and then we'll see where it goes from there. It is a big one. You've done a great job, of course, hitting published today. Congratulations. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Aaron.